What's up guys? I'm back. Welcome to another update on Oracle of Malaysia and LuxCore Studios. When we last talked, I was having a little bit of a come to Jesus kind of moment with Oracle Malaysia in my game. There's a lot of things about game development that I have no experience with. And one of the major ones is making a game look really good. Uh, if you've played any of the playtest or seen any of the footage, it doesn't look like all those other indie devs that have these fantastic looking games. Coming off of a six month period at the end of March, I really had to evaluate and really see, was it viable? Am I gonna be able to continue? And the answer to that question is, I still don't know. <laughs> I don't. I'm still kind of in this weird spot of the game's not quite there. I know it's not quite there. There's little things that I know I can do better, but there's also little things I, I can't do at the moment. And I'm trying to figure out how to get the right people in position that I can contract out or something like that. On the positive side, I was able to give the game and show some uh, footage to some other game devs. And they gave me some really good pointers on how to increase, namely something called juice. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term, which I was, um, because I would have called it polish in the AAA industry or something like that, but indie gamers call it juice. And juice is basically adding impact, uh, feel, particles, shaders, and all that type of thing. It just feels more alive. So, powered by a whole bunch of caffeine and a little bit of nicotine, I spent the last month doing that. That's why you haven't heard me, because I've been very heads down understanding these systems in Godot, trying to figure out how shaders work, trying to figure out how the particle system works, trying to make it so it looks really good as opposed to not very good. Let's take a look, quick look at, let's take a quick look at my first, uh, like, like dialing up the juiciness to 10. So that camera shake and blood particles, because you know, you have to have blood particles. Let's take a look at it. Dialed up to 11. <laughs> uh, yeah. We may need to tone down some of the juice on this one. Goodness, look at that camera shake. It's making me nauseous just looking at the screen. But, uh, you know, those blood particles, <laughs> crazy. Ah, oh, geez, that was a little bit too much. Let's tweak this amplitude a little bit. Um, let's see, yeah, cut that down a little bit, cut that down, make the minimum a little bit smaller. Max amplitude in six. I think that's probably a good spot. That'll probably work out better. All right, let's try this again. All right, camera feels a little better. Yeah, camera feels a little better. The blood things. It's fun to watch a full build with all of the like all the really powerful items. You just kind of mow through stuff. And this is kind of what, oh my gosh, that's so satisfying. This is kind of what I'm looking forward to is like as the game grows and builds and increases in size that people will experience this type of thing, just like mow through stuff. I will have to figure out how to increase the difficulty. As, at the moment, I would call it pretty balanced for the like the amount of items you get, but when you get a whole bunch of items, you just destroy things. And it's fun to watch the stacks happen. Things I use to increase the juiciness, the feel of the game. Um, the first one was definitely the particle system. Godot has a fantastic particle system. Uh, you can either make a CPU particles or a GPU particles particles that run on the uh, CPU or the GPU. I decided to use GPU particles. There's some I believe there's some drawbacks. I haven't done a lot of research into CPU particles, but the GPU particles, for the most part, add a little bit of flair and juiciness to my game. So things that added, y'all saw the um, the blood. There's some arrows, trails on there to make things feel a little bit more exciting, stuff like that. There's a dash, there's um, smoke on torches, there's some fire on some of the torches, and little things like that just add like something to the game a little bit that, that make the world feel a little bit more alive. Uh, one of my favorite things that I did was I added a water shader and so different areas, instead of just having like kind of static pits that just fall down, I added some water there. You can see like bones was kind of like wave. One of the interesting things that I uh, messed around with was normal maps on a in a two dimensional game. So there are aspects to um, this is this is goes into game development that I have not done a lot with, like the very much the art side. I've always had artists in my AAA career that basically hand me the asset and then say, okay, just like add it here. And so I start adding it. I added a normal map to my dungeon, um, to the dungeon tile set. So now everything has like a little bit of a butt map. I ran into a small problem with the floor where like the edges of the normal map, because it's inside the Atlas, it was having some issues showcasing that. In shader code, I apply a floor shader to all the floor tiles so that it wouldn't have like this ridge in the, uh, 
in between each tile and like make it look like a checkerboard. So it looks smoother now, smooth, but has like those the little bump maps on like the texture, like the texturized portion of the thing, which is kind of nice. The other thing that I ran into with normal maps was actually on my player character. But what you can't do is if you're going to use like a skeletal mesh, like a polygon 2D or something like that, you can't add normal maps as simply. What you can do right now is you can apply a shader to that section and then give a normal map associated with that area. And so I was able to just apply, again, apply a shader to my character, then add some normal maps on to the character and, and provides a little bit more dynamic lighting and stuff like that. And everything just ended up feeling a whole bunch more alive. Something that doesn't require a whole lot of like GPU code and shader code and like not that whole uh, brain, you know, changing the way your brain works on how, how to code things or how to think about the, the problem that you're trying to solve was just adding reaction for the play, for the enemies when they're being hit. Now, previously I had my, my enemies, like they just changed their face, uh, face sprite to go. I think um, the normal is like smiling like this. And then whenever they get hit with damage, they'll be like, like everybody does that. And it, it does work a little bit, but it's not like super impactful, we'll say. Like not juice, well, hey, there we go. It's not juicy. What I decided to do was whenever you got hit, the eyes would bounce, <laughs> bounce over to the left and then come back come back center over a short period. And it'll also like affect the uh, the square that they're involved in. So it just adds a little bit more like aliveness to the enemy characters, even though they're squares. When the player falls into a pit, dropping him out of the sky rather than just placing him back there, adding a starter area, which is kind of tutorial-esque that make the game feel more like a game and less like a um, <laughs> pile of shit, I guess. <laughs> it's not exactly a pile of shit, but yeah. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. I've, I've had a lot of fun this past month. Thomas Brush, if you haven't heard from him, I got to talk with him a little bit the other day. He emphasized I need to get my my hook in. I need to have like a good gameplay hook, I need to have a good visual hook, and I need to have a good story hook. And I think I have a story that works, but it doesn't excite the player. I think I have gameplay that is fun, but it's hard to showcase the gameplay that and excite the player with the gameplay and I definitely don't have a visual style that, that excites people. And I really think like the end of March, that was the, the understanding that I had, like, you know, when you, you start, you know, objectively looking at a creative piece that you're making and realizing it's just not there. The plan right now is to full steam ahead, polish, polish, polish this act one prototype, vertical slice, vertical sliver for steam next. So kind of June 10th is gonna be the, the come to Jesus moment for LuxCore. And four, see if I if it goes really well, then yay. If it doesn't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I keep like shrugging, but I zoomed in a little bit because I was having so much room above here that <laughs> you guys can't see my hands anymore. So, and if I do this, I'm, I look like I have tiny little shoulders. And I, we don't want that. I really need to nail down what excites a player about this. And so far, I can't just rely on me because we all know I'm not that exciting. Uh, if you're interested in playing the game, please come check it out. Discord will be linked below. That's where we I, I post all the builds. Steam page will get put up sometime in the next two or three weeks, probably. Um, then I'll have a, a demo that you can go and play and through Steam so you don't have to click through like the whole, does this EXE actually exist? Looking forward to keeping you all updated. Probably the next uh, thing will be a discussion about the uh, Steam page going live is probably what it's going to be. So thanks for watching. Sorry I missed a mid-April update. It was for a good reason. I literally did nothing <laughs> except for shaders and particles and polish. And it was a lot of fun. So I'll catch y'all later.